Every day you're surrounded by different types of people. Some inspire you, some drain your energy, and others leave you feeling manipulated or misunderstood. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the eight personality types that you need to be aware of. And the first one is the deep narcissist. The term narcissist is probably overused in modern society, but the deep narcissist is someone who's consumed by an excessive sense of self-importance and constantly craves admiration. Their ego is fragile and they manipulate others to maintain their inflated self-image, often at the expense of empathy or genuine relationships. Some of the telling signs of a deep narcissist is that they're obsessed with their image and self-presentation. They constantly seek praise and validation. They tend to exaggerate achievements while downplaying the contributions of others and they lack empathy and see people primarily as tools for their own self-gain. In terms of what causes someone to become a deep narcissist, well it often emerges from childhood experiences where either excessive praise or severe neglect occurred. In some cases they were raised to believe that they were exceptional, leading to an inflated sense of entitlement. In others they may have been ignored or neglected, causing them to develop fantasies of grandeur or compensate for some deep-seated insecurities. This need for external validation becomes a coping mechanism to maintain their self-worth. In terms of some strategies to deal with a deep narcissist, it's important that you set clear boundaries and avoid feeding their constant need for validation. In moderate cases, you can maintain a relationship as long as you don't challenge their ego directly. However, with extreme narcissists, it's best to distance yourself as their manipulative tendencies can often become toxic and damaging. This is especially true in a close friendship or a romantic relationship. The next one is the charismatic leader. The charismatic leader is naturally magnetic, drawing people to them with their confidence, vision and charm. They inspire others, often becoming leaders in their field, but their influence can sometimes be used manipulatively. In order to recognize one, look how they command attention in social settings without much effort. They inspire others with their vision and emotional intelligence, they know how to read people's desires and appeal to them, and they can sometimes use their charm to manipulate for personal gain. Charismatic leaders typically come from environments where their social skills were nurtured and they were encouraged to lead. Early success in influencing others can create confidence, but it may also develop as a defense mechanism for those who experienced insecurity in childhood. They often learn to command attention and admiration as a way to protect themselves from vulnerability. In terms of dealing with these types of people, appeal to their vision and collaborate with them, but set boundaries to prevent being drawn into their personal agenda. In moderate cases, they can be inspiring leaders, but if they begin using their charm to manipulate, distance yourself to avoid being controlled. The next one is the victim. The victim sees themselves as perpetually wronged by the world and uses their suffering to elicit sympathy. They externalize blame and avoid taking responsibility for their own problems, often trapping themselves in a cycle of helplessness. In order to recognize someone with this type of mentality or personality, look for the following signs. They frequently complain about how life or others have mistreated them. They avoid responsibility and deflect blame for their own circumstances. They seek constant reassurance and sympathy from others, and they often become passive aggressive or bitter if their victimhood isn't acknowledged. The origins of the victim personality type often develop from childhood environments, where they felt powerless or emotionally neglected. Alternatively, they may have been overcoddled, learning that helplessness garnered attention. Over time, they come to rely on their victimhood as a way to receive validation or avoid accountability reinforcing their narrative of being wronged by life. The best way to deal with people with these traits is to acknowledge their feelings without enabling their victim narrative. Encourage them to take responsibility and focus on solutions rather than blame. In moderate cases, guiding them towards problem solving can be effective, but in extreme cases, you may need to set firm boundaries or disengage as their constant negativity can become draining. The next one is the pleaser. The pleaser is driven by a desire to keep everyone around them happy, often sacrificing their own needs in the process. They avoid conflict at all costs, seeking validation through helplessness and approval, but this can also lead to resentment when their efforts go unrecognized. To help you spot these types of people, look for the following signs. 
They're overly accommodating, often at their own expense. They avoid conflict and go out of their way to keep peace. They seek constant approval and validation from others. And they can become passive aggressive or resentful if their efforts aren't appreciated. Pleasers typically grow up in environments where love and approval were conditional. They may have learned to value others' needs above their own in order to gain attention or affection. This pattern often persists into adulthood where they continue to avoid conflict and overextend themselves to maintain approval from those around them. The best way to deal with this type of personality is to offer them genuine appreciation, but also encourage them to set boundaries and to step outside their comfort zone. In moderate cases, helping them see the value of balancing their needs with others can be beneficial. In extreme cases, where they overextend themselves to the point of emotional burnout, it's important to help them prioritize their own well-being and avoid being used as an emotional crutch. Kindness and empathy is always appreciated by these types of people, but at the same time, it's important to balance that with a little bit of assertiveness to help them see things from a different perspective. The next one is the rebel. The rebel thrives in defying rules and challenging authority. They value independence and are motivated by a desire to break free from societal norms. While their defiance can be empowering, it can also lead to self-destructive behavior if unchecked. Rebels typically exhibit the following traits. They frequently question or defy rules and authority. They value freedom and independence over conformity. They have a strong individualistic streak and often resist societal expectations and they can sometimes be confrontational, especially when they feel restricted. Rebels often come from environments where they felt controlled or overly restricted, developing defiance as a way to assert their autonomy. In some cases, they may have grown up in a chaotic or neglectful environment where they learn to rely on themselves, viewing authority with suspicion. Their defiance becomes a coping mechanism to protect their sense of freedom and identity. The best way to deal with rebels is to respect their need for autonomy and present options rather than imposing restrictions. In moderate cases, they can respect authority if they feel their independence is honored. In extreme cases, where their defiance turns into reckless or destructive behavior, maintaining boundaries or distancing yourself might be necessary. The next one is the rigid perfectionist. The rigid perfectionist is obsessed with order, control and achieving flawless results. Their attention to detail can make them highly effective, but their inflexibility can also create tension and frustration when things don't meet their high standards. In order to help you recognize one, notice the following. They're extremely detail oriented and focus on precision. They are quick to criticize mistakes, both in themselves and others. They are anxious or frustrated when things don't go according to plan, and they struggle to delegate tasks or accept different methods. Rigid perfectionists often come from childhood environments where achievement and success were prioritized, and love or approval was conditional on perfection. Alternatively, they may have grown up in chaotic environments, overcompensating with control and order to feel secure. This drive for perfection becomes a way to avoid failure or criticism. The best way to deal with them is to acknowledge their need for precision, but offer structured compromises to ease their anxiety. In moderate cases, Showing them that imperfection doesn't equate to failure can help. In extreme cases, if their rigidity becomes toxic, you may need to set boundaries to protect your own well-being. The next one is the manipulator. The manipulator is highly strategic, using charm, persuasion, and subtle influence to control others. They often twist situations to their advantage, exploiting others without them realizing it, and may act in a duplicitous manner to achieve their goals. To help you recognize one, look for the following. They are skilled at using charm to manipulate situations. They frequently tell half-truths or obscure their real intentions. They present different faces to different people, keeping them off balance. And they tend to view people as tools to be used for personal gain. Manipulators often come from environments where power dynamics were central to survival. Whether from emotional instability or fierce competition, they learned early on that influencing others was key to maintaining control. In adulthood, manipulation becomes their primary way of navigating relationships and situations, often with little regard for others' well-being. The best way to deal with one is to maintain strong personal boundaries 
and be wary of their charm. In moderate cases, recognizing their tactics and keeping your distance can prevent you from being manipulated, but in extreme cases, where their influence is damaging or deceitful, disengaging completely may be the safest course of action. And the last one from this list is the detached observer. They are emotionally distant and prefer to observe from the sidelines rather than engage. They are highly introspective and logical, but often struggle with forming deep emotional connections. They are also more comfortable analyzing situations rather than participating in them. Detached observers typically exhibit the following traits. They prefer solitude and intellectual pursuits over emotional engagement. They are uncomfortable with intense emotional displays or deeply personal connections. Often they act as a neutral mediator providing a detached perspective, and they may seem emotionally cold or indifferent even in close relationships. Detached observers often come from environments where emotions were either discouraged or chaotic, leading them to retreat into their intellect. In some cases, they may have been overwhelmed by emotional intensity in childhood, prompting them to develop emotional detachment as a defense mechanism. They find comfort in analysis and observation, avoiding the vulnerability of emotional entanglements. The best way to deal with them is to engage with them through intellectual conversations and respect their need for emotional space. In moderate cases, they may be encouraged to open up gradually, but in extreme cases, they may never fully engage emotionally. If you need emotional validation, it's important to recognize that they may not be capable of providing it, and you should look to someone else. So this completes the list of the eight personality types that you should be aware of, but it's important to know that this list isn't exhaustive, and it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone fits into one of these eight categories. This is simply a collection of different personalities that exhibit different traits that may be relevant to you or to the world more generally. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting or informative. If you did, I'd really appreciate if you could like and subscribe, or even leave a comment down below and let me know any specific feedback or anything about this video that you found interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.